You guys are wondering what are all the new things you can do with the camels, chisel bookshelves, hanging signs, and bamboo blocks. Hello there, Ray here, and I spent the last five hours testing the new 1.20 snapshot so you didn't have to. So do me a solid one and subscribe or leave a like. I also found tons of tricks and glitches along the way. Shift click on a camel. Oh, you can open up the baby camel's inventory. It's so cute. Oh, look at that. Dinner bone camel. Its legs are so long. That's interesting. Oh my goodness. When it sits down, <laughs> its head goes into the ground. Oh, look how flat it is. Okay, guys. Oh, what the? That looks so cursed. You guys are riding on top of his feet. You're literally suspended on his feet. Oh, that is so cursed. Camels don't like spit on you or anything. They don't really need to be tamed so far either. You could just go ahead and jump on them right away or add a saddle, unlike horses. Also, if you do damage to them, they do reheal. There, this one gave me two XP. Oh, this one actually gave XP's and a saddle. But we didn't get any loot, like it didn't produce leather or anything like that. And killing the babies does not produce any XP. Normally when someone joins you in a boat, if they're the second passenger, they're always put in the back. This is the same for when riding a camel with a saddle. But there seems to be a bug when there's a camel without a saddle, as now the second player who hops on is put in front. Oh! Okay, well, they do kick you off when you fall into the water. Oh, I think it's kind of broken, the sprint thing. <laughs> a multiplayer. Okay. Oh, I got you do the jump from the back seat. So camels are past the mob. Let's see if we can go ahead and use a lead on them. And you can. And... Oh, it seems like you cannot actually move them when they're sitting down. Okay, but you can move them when they're adults. I was hoping you can move them when they're sitting down. It might be kind of a funny thing to do is like sneak them underneath of some blocks. So we're trying to get a camel into a uh, boat or raft. Oh, wow. Can you not even pull them? <laughs> Uh-oh, look how long the lead is. This is the world record longest lead. The lead is so long. Oh my goodness. I just tried to pull this one camel over here. <laughs> Dude, this camel does not want to move. Okay, now this one moves in water. Okay, that's how they should be. Let's see, does it go inside the boat? Typically things that are bigger than the boat don't go inside. And it appears the camel is. But that means if we get a baby camel, we should be able to get that into the boat. Come on, camel. Oh, we got a baby inside. Nice. That also means that if we get it in there while it's a baby and then we grow it up, we can actually get something that's not normally possible. We can get adult camel inside of the boat. Kind of like getting a donkey in the boat. Look at that. The camel's so massive. Oh, it looks so hilarious. Oh, look at that. We're carrying a massive camel. Oh, that looks so epic. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Look at me. Oh, I can't punch because I'm inside the camel. <laughs> Wait, if I right click? Oh no, I feed the camel. Okay, if I right click like this. Oh, I can ride the camel. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that. Yes, we got a person riding the boat. We got a camel and we got two people on top of the camel. That's amazing. <laughs> now, mine carts are a bit different. So they can actually hold things that normally wouldn't uh, be bigger than them. So we can hold something really big like a ghast or even a camel. That works great. So you can use these as a way to like push mobs off similar to using like gas. Probably easier to move around and catching them than actual gas. They are a bit taller so you can actually hide them underneath the platforms and use them to push off mobs as well. Pretty awesome. With the new changes that they made with uh, leads no longer doing tons of damage, you should be able to transport mobs using elytras and leads and actually land with them to do like pretty much no damage. So we put a boat into a minecart. Let's pull these two baby camels and put them inside of the boat, which is riding the minecart. Now let's grow up these two camels. This is going to be so good. Got monster here helping us. Can we reach a baby one? Oh, we can still reach it. Awesome. We'll keep feeding it. <gasps> Look at that, guys. <laughs> we got two massive camels. Okay, now we need four people to come ride these camels. Look at that. We got four people riding one minecart. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, so I got two parrots on my shoulder. And if I go ahead and ride the camels, yes, they stay on it. Okay, so now we need to get three more people that have two parrots each. Oh my goodness, we got it! We got a single minecart that has a boat riding it, that has two camels riding it, that has four people riding it, that has a total of eight parrots on top of all our shoulders. A total of 15 different things riding a single minecart. Oh my gosh, this looks so epic! <laughs> Great job, everybody. Okay, so we got sitting camel, minecart. Oh, so once you pick up Sitting camel automatically stands up. Uh, it looks like it goes back to standing. Oh, it tries to make it run. So using the dash ability makes it infinite running. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Look at his tail. When released from the minecart, it did stop dashing. 
Camels that are sitting can't be pushed by the player. Maybe. Oh yeah, next I'm actually stand up. We'll try to do the dash thing again on the boat. Oh yeah, <laughs> the dash thing does the exact same thing in the boat. Actually, it looks a little bit better because you can see the legs fully. Dude, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of those uh, those little rides you can do as kids where you put like quarters into it and then it'll like start moving, <laughs> right? Because it's like on a display and then it's like moving, like even the head's moving like da 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 da, -da like the little horsies. <gasps> oh, that's amazing. It's so true. Camel on a treadmill. That's another way. Yeah, it does look like it's on a treadmill. Let's say you get your camel's exercise. Let's see. If I click on it with the lead, I can remove it. And it looks like it acts normal once it gets off. So this is all the information that comes with the camel. Can see that they have it is tempted. Probably to do with food. They also have grazing cooldown. So I guess they pretend to eat. Most of these other ones are very similar to other mobs. Eating haystack. What? They also have a temper. So they get upset after a while, they're just gonna sit down. So this person got a dinner bone camel that's also an in infinite sprinting mode. It almost looks like the camel got stuck on its back and it's trying to get back up again. <laughs> Let's test to see what happens when a camel stands up and there's blocks above it. Will it suffocate? Oh, yeah, so it does kind of stand up. So, can the player suffocate by riding the camel underneath of a solid block here? So, actually, it does something weird. Look at that. When I go underneath of it, it automatically makes the player like crouch underneath of it. Okay, so it visually doesn't appear with other players. So it looks like we already got some infinite running camels that are up on leads. <laughs> They're running, but not running anywhere. It does seem like all the camels have 16 hearts. So camels actually have more health than horses do. Question is, will creepers try to blow up Oh, yeah, they'll definitely blow up on top of a camel. <laughs> so, will the Enderman be able to attack us because they are taller? Uh, oh, I don't think they can attack us. Oh, that's pretty cool. Spiders can kind of jump. Oh, and also skeletons and like witches could get you. So, can wither skeletons attack players on top of a camel? Appears so. So, camel's ability to jump one and a half blocks compared to horses, which only can jump one block, can make them do these uh, weird types of stairs where they actually can get up quite high. So, you can actually do camel parkour because they do jump a little bit upwards, but they also jump forwards a bunch. Very different than player parkour. The camels can actually make quite long jumps, 10 blocks. Someone asked if speed potions will make the camels actually go faster. So let's go ahead and throw a potion down. Oh yeah, it definitely seems like it helps. And then let's go ahead and add a dash. Yeah, we can move quite fast. Obviously horses are just more naturally going to be faster than camels. It does seem that even with the dash, you can't get the camel to uh, actually jump over top of a too high wall, which is a little disappointing. Camels can hop over fences. Let's see if they can hop over something slightly taller, which is a block and a bed. And it doesn't they can do it with the jump though. The camels can jump as high as a block and a enchanting table, but they can't jump the next height, which is a end frame. You write it and then let me write it. Now you log off. I think the camel would should go. Oh no, the camel stays. Okay. Oh yeah. So if there's just one person on the camel, they log off with it. Similar to like a horse. That is one way to actually get more inventory room is like put a chest on like a donkey and then log off with it. Then you can save more inventory space rather than just use like an inner chest and chocolate boxes. Now you can't actually place chests onto the camels. They don't even have a slot for it when you open up the inventory. Now in real life, people actually do milk camels. So let's go ahead and give it a try. And no. So we got a potion of leaping and let's see if it actually helps camel jump. This is two blocks tall and we still can't jump over it. So like horses, you can use dispensers with a saddle to automatically put it onto them. You can actually use this with a new change to allow you to drop stuff automatically just by holding Q. You could once again use it to make an automatic saddle sorter, but now we can also sort saddles using a lace. Now camels resting is very similar to like foxes sitting down. So camels being able to change your hitbox from small to large is the third mob that can actually do this. We had the puffer fish as well as the shulker that could do it. So like other bookshelves, it can be used for fuel and they probably will also burn. But it looks like they don't have their burning function currently. So the question is, can you actually place any books in with hoppers? And it looks like the answer is no. And even with dispensers, powering them, it just drops the item. Hopefully they add some redstone function to this, which would be really cool. So if we place one of these chisel bookshelves over top of a hopper, it doesn't actually pull any of the books out. 
If you look at the chiseled book over on the F3 screen on the right, it says books stored. Actually, it says a number. Last interacted slot, because it's supposed to keep track of the last book that's removed. And if you remove the last book, we actually have zero books, but we interacted with the last slot. Meaning that we got a redstone signal of one. Uh, that is a bit odd. I don't know if that's as useful as just knowing how many books are inside. So one thing that is odd about the bookshelves is that when you place it a book and remove it, it still has a signal of one. But if you remove the bookshelf and place it again, it goes back down to zero. So if you want to activate your secret door, you actually have to remove two books to change the redstone enough to even detect it. So not very useful. Now you can also detect the change in the chisel bookshelf with an observer. So as you remove books or place them, you can detect that. You should be able to pick block the chiseled book in creative and it'll automatically have the books inside of it. It has NBT tag, but there's, <laughs> there's no books inside of it. Oh, okay, when you right click it, then it updates. Okay, just a visual bug, I guess. The question is, when it blows with TNT, does it drop the books? Summit TNT. Yeah, it actually does drop the books. Do new chiseled books help you in enchanting tables? And it looks like it's no. So with the new science having this bar that you can actually collide with, that means we do get some new kind of sizes for blocks or potentially new ones. So the sign bar is only two pixels at the very top. And if you look from above, we can see that it is the center of four pixels. So if we compare that to my world with all the different types of block sizes and their heights organized from lowest to highest, we can see a trap door is actually three pixels. So that means a hanging sign is gonna be a brand new height for pressing up from underneath. And it would actually go right over here. Now, if we press up against the side of a sign, it's gonna be very similar to any of these blocks in this row here, being just four pixels across, being centered on the block. So what happens when you have hanging signs onto blocks that are moving? And it looks like they actually popped off. So will sign go up against honey block? And nope, that's because it doesn't actually have a full meter by meter square side, but it can go underneath because underneath it only needs the very center to be supported. You can see, even though it looks very similar to this block appearing to be a full meter cube, it actually isn't. So where this one can hang with the chains apart, this one has to hang with the chains in the center. Now with these signs, just like normal signs, you only can actually read them from one side. It would be interesting if you could add text on both sides. And like most signs, it breaks off when it's not supported. So a little bit of hopper actually extends, so you can hook it onto that. And let's try glass. The panes are the smallest block with the center. We can still place them on them. So I showed this cursing you can do with having stuff support each other. I'll show you guys how to do this. You have a grass, place it down. Then we place like a carpet above that. Anything similar that needs a supported block underneath. And then we can place anything underneath that needs a supporting block above, such as like a lantern. In this case, we got the new hanging sign. So if we just right click that, look at that guys. <laughs> We got a hanging sign, which is supporting the carpet, and we got a carpet that's supporting the hanging sign. <laughs> so here you can kind of see the difference between the two different types of signs. Now, because hanging signs are tile entities and contain information, they can't actually be moved with pistons. So just like other signs, you can hold back water with them, and you can also go ahead and waterlog them. Well, wow, someone actually made a kind of like a cool little walkway using the signs. It looks really nice. So if you just click it on to a block, it will have the wide chains. But if you shift click, it'll have the chains that connect to a center point. So the question is, if you go to a piston and we put in the wide chains and then we go ahead and extend the piston, will that cause it to pop off? No, it doesn't. Okay. Uh, that's very fascinating. <laughs> this chain is not being supported whatsoever. So you can't actually use the new signs to keep mobs in while still having a large access to them. Kind of like having a trap door on top. But you can also label them too. Look at this amazing house uh, that was built by Glass Dragon. So the question is, can you actually craft other stuff that you would use wood for, but instead use the bamboo planks? Chest, crafting tables, note blocks, pistons. You can even make the new chiseled bookshelf with just bamboo stuff. So it appears anything that you could use planks for, you could also use the new bamboo planks in order to craft it up. Of course, you could go ahead and turn the planks back into sticks. Okay, so we got two options. We can use two bamboo to make one stick, or we can use eight bamboo to make four sticks. So I guess it's the same. 
Now, because you can make so many different wood things out of bamboo as well, it makes sense to go ahead and actually just make a bamboo farm instead of having a tree farm, as bamboo farms can run without the player having to constantly plant stuff, and you don't need to have explosions to actually break the bamboo. So you don't need to waste like TNT or use TNT dupers. Just building a simple bamboo farm like this one here, collecting tons of it, and then just crafting into planks, and then you can use that to build pretty much all the different wood stuff, which one third of everything in the game of Minecraft uses wood so it is definitely the most important item in the game so we're gonna see how efficient bamboo is we got one bamboo plank and we're gonna smelt some stuff up and that also equates to four bamboo items let's see which one does better looks like that one went through very quickly and we're just going to get a single charcoal out where this one looks like it's slightly more efficient where we had some extra fuel but not enough to quite get a second charcoal so it is a bit more efficient to actually make the planks out of the bamboo and then use them for fuel bamboo raft and bamboo chest raft but oddly when you open up a bamboo raft with chest it actually says boat with chest instead of raft with chest so the raft is the exact same size as a boat but it does appear that mobs sit in the boat a bit differently. Like on the raft, they sit above it more where the boats are sitting deeper in it. So with the difference in hitboxes, it is possible to get different heights because you can then add boats on top of these to get very specific new heights that we didn't have before. People were making the comparison between the bamboo scaffolding, which is the previous bamboo structure we have in the game, and the new bamboo planks and other things. They are a little bit different in coloring. Now the bamboo blocks did kind of remind me of like a uh, bee nest or they do kind of look like the straw from hay. But you can think about it, bamboo is actually a grass and so is wheat. So they are very similar. So since now mobs cannot actually spawn on top of scaffolding, you could actually use it as a way to spawn proof large areas. Just spam click the ground and move to the side and it's just going to place in large amounts of it going out a total of eight blocks, which is pretty fast. Just cost you some bamboo and string. This technique could probably use like in the nether dimension or any type of farm where you're trying to spawn proof it, such as like a wither skeleton farm or like witch farm. So the question is, if mobs can't spawn on top of it, can they spawn if they still have air gap underneath and then scaffolding just above them? And it actually seems so, though it seems that we're only getting spiders and actually creepers to spawn in. So I'm guessing the other mobs are actually colliding with this top part. So I guess it could be another way to make a creeper only farm. So the change that has to do with Alay's no longer picking up different types of motion effects also applies for the actual drinkable versus splash one. So if I throw a drinkable one, Alay will actually pick it up and sort it. But if I throw a splash one, we no longer have to worry about it sorting those accidentally. We can have a special layer that just does those types. This means that I can actually improve upon my bartering farm and make it sort out those different types. So the recent change where the players can't be immediately teleported into the end dimension would affect different farms where I use this, such as like in my pearl obsidian farm, where I have the player put a bed right beside the end portal so that as soon as you come out of the bed, you're immediately placed inside. But this has now been changed so it doesn't work. So instead, you're just going to have to have the player sleep in bed, wake up beside it, and then get pushed in using like pistons or water. Now that Screaming Goats can produce more Screaming Goats, it's better to use Screaming Goats inside my Goat Horn farm as they are more likely to start ramming. So I was told not to actually spectate anybody because you will actually crash. And yes, it does. It actually crashes your Minecraft. Now come play 1.20 with me as I stream live on Twitch. Also follow me on my new TikTok as well as Instagram accounts where my last video went viral. I always have so much fun playing along with you guys in the new snapshots. So thank you guys so much for the support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.